is Fatma Hassan Saif. I live at Fuoni. I live with my parents. I'm a member of the Raja Foundation. And now I'm a teacher in school. Uh, for me, I say ocean is the place that's uh, resting fishes and sometimes when you have uh, problems it's a place that you make stress out some of people in Zanzibar don't like to know how to swim because they are afraid of maybe to die they say oh if I'm going to swimming sometime the water this it can pull up me out and then I can, I'm going to die so they are afraid of water yeah, in Zanzibar there are a lot of people. They're afraid of water. That's why we are here. We want to know how to swim. All of us in here, Zanzibar, we can't do something because of shy. Because we, when we want to do something, people like people look at us. They say, oh, "I'm feel shy. I can't do this." When we know how to swim and explain other in here, Zanzibar, they can love this. Because I, I know others want to know how to swim, but because of their shy or sometimes because of their afraid of water, so they can't do anything. So when we know and then we can say for them about, about this project, they will love this. So a tree for you and I. By the street of pain and misery, we didn't want to stay, had to leave behind the day so great, we had to run away. Um, my name is Arshin and I'm the director of Daraja Foundation, which is a charity that's based in Zanzibar. And um, our charity basically focuses on youth empowerment and young adult empowerment and uh, engagement. So the main thing we do is we run a transition house, which serves as a place for growth and learning to be independent and self-reliant for orphans that age out of an orphanage that we work with. So when they turn 18, they come to access our services there. And um, we're basically supporting them until they're 25 and beyond, but until they're comfortable being on their own and, um, and able to, to work or continue with their lives independently. So the Flow House is a transition house. And on the same property, we also have empowerment centers. So we have a bicycle empowerment center and a women's empowerment center, and also a skills hub. So with these spaces, we collaborate with other NGOs, including Kawa Training Center, Kimbia Vila Shaka, Upendo Means Love, and this is a space for youth to come and um, also learn skills, meet each other, and basically um, grow. Um, our foundations work together to, to help empower a woman, and um, we create a safe space for them to come to discuss with other women, to meet people, to um, get opportunities to learn more things. So we try to, to uh, engage them with new experiences, teach them new skills, help them gain confidence in their lives, and, uh, and, and basically empower. So this, this helps them with more success in their future, and, and also they can spread that success around by, by teaching others. 
It's important to empower a woman in Zanzibar because it's important for her to know that there is a lot that she can do in the society and in her own community. Traditionally in, in Zanzibar, women, you know, from, from their culture and religion, women are, are caretakers of their home and caretakers of the children and traditionally men would, men would be working. So over the years, with, um, with more awareness of, of women's role in the society and what, and what a woman can contribute, uh, more women are working, more women are in government, more women are entrepreneurs. So it's, it's important to, to get together and show that you know, it's, it's possible for more women to come out of their houses, do more things, and, um, and contribute to the society. Swimming skills, I think, are vital for both men and women and everybody. It's an important skill to have, uh, to know how to swim. First of all, here on, in Zanzibar, we're living on an island. So with the ocean surrounding us, swimming is, is extremely important. Um, knowing how to, to swim can help a woman incorporate a healthy lifestyle. And, um, and also it gives her the skills and increases her employability because she can now you know, access jobs in uh, tourism, in hospitality, uh, in, in the environment, and she can also fish if she wants. And also knowing how to swim will increase or improve her leadership skills and creativity. She can be a teacher, she can teach those skills to other people, and she can potentially save lives with those skills. So for me, as a, as a director of an NGO, to collaborate with enthusiastic organizations like Fitbit, it's, um, it's very beneficial and, uh, and I'm very happy to, to be able to work with you guys because you are creating opportunities, you're bringing awareness and you're showing that you know, anything is possible, especially for women. So when you're coming out here and you are teaching them to swim, it builds a woman's confidence. It helps her be a leader in her community. It allows her to, to go out and, and face the world differently. It gives her a new perspective. She knows that she, she has the skills to be able to teach other people. She knows she has the skills to be able to use that in her work. She has the, the skills to, to be able to engage and contribute to her community. And, and yeah, and she knows that she is now empowered and can do, can do everything, you know? Yeah. So thank you guys very much for, for being here and for, for doing all you do. We really appreciate all the work that you've, that you've put in. So what does swimming mean to the local population? What does it mean and what, what, why is the Fitbit project important? So swimming, I'll answer it first from my point of view and then I'll try and answer it from the point of view of a Zanzibari and then try and answer it from the view of a Zanzibari woman as well. So from a Chumba point of view, as a conservationist, you can talk as much as you want about how beautiful the corals are, how a sea turtle is amazing, how a dolphin is amazing. If you don't see it, you don't understand it, you don't love it. And, and always, I think, as any conservationist, when they've been in the field for long enough, they know that actually more important sometimes than the actual patrolling of the reef is the education, is the foundation of the conservation, and that is the education. Now, when you're teaching about a lion and a tiger, you can find a nice video, it's fine. But something like an interaction between a fish and a coral, they need to see it. Now, take it a step back. To see it, they need to be comfortable in the water. They need to be able to spend time in the water. What does that really mean? It means that what I'm saying is the foundation for conservation is the fact that the people can swim. We need the people to be able to swim so that we can take them snorkeling to teach them about the reef. The more times you take them to snorkel on the reef, the more they're going to start to love the environment. The more they love the environment, the more our conservation is effective. So I see that swimming is the first step in a long process of conservation, and that's what's going to make conservation sustainable. So sometimes it doesn't seem like there's a linear line there, but there is. There is the, the swimming, getting the confidence in the water to enjoy the water is the first step to learning, and learning is the, is the next step to loving, and the next, loving is the next step to conservation. 
So it's it's a big for me, the swimming program is really important for the long-term success of Chumba as a conservation project and conservation in Zanzibar, conservation in Tanzania and conservation in the world. I would say that from a point of view of a Zanzibari, there's also a very, uh, I don't know if the right word is morbid, but there's a morbid reason. People, Zanzibar is an island, uh, Zanzibar and Guja, which is made up of Nguja and Pemba and many small islands like Chumba, it's an, it's an island surrounded by water. Everybody uses boats. Everybody eats fish. They're so connected to the water, but majority of the people here can't swim. So if you take it away from my point of view, just from a point of view of the local people, going into the water can be a life and death situation. Really, it's, it's that serious. When a ferry goes down or a small boat carrying people from Unguja to Dar es Salaam goes under the water, if they can't swim or they can't get a life jacket on time, they could be dead, you know, they die, you know, it's really that serious. And there is these situations, uh, you know, that there is these horrible stories where a boat goes down and everybody on board dies. You know, even the, even the skippers a lot of the time can't swim. The fishermen, some of the fishermen go out fishing to catch fish, you know, just to survive so their family can survive. But they, a lot of the fishermen go out and they don't know if they're coming back that day. So they're not only f going as fishermen, they're, they're also going to sea with this, for, for even maybe $5 a day, not knowing if they're gonna come back. So swimming is also a very important skill for people here. Then on a really positive note, because there's so much tourism, because there's so much marine life, swimming is a gateway to a good job. So you can also look at it in a positive way, not just the morbid way, but if we can get people to swim, we're empowering them. And I think you mentioned, how is it for Zanzibari women? This is the, the beautiful thing about a project like this is you're empowering women that in many cases have not been empowered, you know? And, you know, um, many of the women have, uh, you know, are housewives. They don't go to work, they don't have a job. So not all women, I, I'm not trying to generalize everybody, but especially with the program that Fitbit has, you're working with community members that are not always so empowered but you're giving them opportunities to learn a skill which can be the foundation for them to become more empowered and to say, I can do this. I can go and get this job. I can be successful. I can be a tour guide. I can be eventually a leader of some sort. I can run my own business. So I see that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a confidence springboard that teaching something like swimming, you know, where they probably all felt that swimming was, going in the water was a life and death situation. And within 10, 20 days within your program, you've managed to make them think, I'm, I can conquer the sea, I can swim, I can go and go snorkeling now, I can enjoy the sea. So that's an incredibly empowering and confidence building situation. Kwa jina naitwa Fatima Salum Suleiman. Ni mwanafunzi ambaye Ninaesoma lugha na pia vile vile ni nimebahatika kuwa ni miongoni mwa kimbia bila shaka Hawajui kwanza kwa wanawake wanafikiriwa kuwa kuogelea ni ni swala la uvuni kwa hiyo ndio maana watu wengi kupitia wanawake wanakuwa nashindwa kujifunza kuogelea Na vile vile utakapokuwa unaweza kuogelea ndo unaweza kuji save maisha yako pale ambapo utapokuwa unasafiri hata pengine itapotokea tatizo lolote kwa hiyo wakati uko ndani ya bahari na vile vile watakuwa wako happy katika maisha yao Bahari ina maana kubwa lakini kwa mimi nitaelezea kwa uchache tu Bahari kama bahari ilivyo ina viumbe tofauti tofauti ambao wanaishi ile ndani ya bahari ambao ni muhimu vile vile kwa binadamu kwa wanatumia tuseme kama katika arzi kuna makabila tofauti tofauti kuna wamasai kuna wa india kuna waswahili kuna na vile vile tunatakiwa kuwa katika environment ama katika marine life inohusiana sana na swala la bahari tuweze kuwafundisha wale mabotmeni kwa sababu wanapotupa zile takataka zinaletea athari wale samaki na wale samaki wenyewe sisi tu, 
ndo tegemeo letu katika kutumia binadamu. Kwa hiyo atakapotumia ile plastiki na plastiki ni tayari linachelewa hu na vile vile ana athari yake pale ambapo maboti meno wanapotupa zile nanga zao watakapokuwa wanaenda prison watakapokuwa wanaenda safari kuu wanakuwa wakiagonga yani kwa hiyo tayari yale mazalio ya samaki yana yanapotea kwa hiyo sisi tayari tunapata tunakuwa tunakosa ule uzalishaji wa samaki unapokwenda uhalisia na ili ili uyajue kama haya yamepasuka ama yatakuwa yameharibika yanakuwa nafanya bleach I live in Zanzibar at Maungani. I have four kids. I'm 35 years old and never swim. <laughs> if, you know, also if I can have I can have a chance to swim, I can teach my kids because they are always asking me they want to swim because I think they had a friend or the others now is now Zanzibar is big, they saw it, they saw men western, they are going to swim, so they want also to swim, but I can't teach them because I don't know how to swim. So it's a good chance for me, I can teach my own children, but also I can teach my students because I, I'm a teacher too. You know, we also in Zanzibar, we have to learn to, to make our, ourselves happy, and I think we don't know many of us. We are women, we have many things, but still in the house, we don't know how to let it go. And we have, yeah, maybe like, I can say I'm lucky somehow because I meet you, I'm teacher, but I know many people, they have something, but they don't know how to, to let it go. Many, especially women, yes, they can be course. inside, many problems from, from husband, from life, but they still, it and just swallow it, just swallow it, just swallow it, yeah. And we have, ma we have many funny, we, we can go to the water and have a swim and let it go, but who knows that? Maybe we think swimming is for the Western people, it's not for us, especially women. women we have no chances in Zanzibar. Women for being good wife and cooking. Especially for maybe 20 years before, it was not for, for all women can have a chance for doing this thing. Swimming, maybe driving a car, something like that. Great, excited. I couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> I was waiting to go to the to the water and experience how to sing. Yeah, and I had big fun. What Thanks. was the most most fun in the water? Floating. Which uh, side? Yeah, I have, I land on one side. On your back. Uh, yeah, back and looking to the sky and relax. It was, it was everything. And I think anyone, if they get a chance to, 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 to do that, 
everyone can say the same thing is enjoying and is another word to forget what you have we have a lot so we can let all stress go away and you can be back fresh but for me all swimming process is something good and special to relax to enjoy to, uh, to have more life maybe to stay so remember this fun it's fun <laughs> Destiny.